faithfulness. Faithfulness, faithfulness is what I long for. Faithfulness is what I need. Faithfulness, faithfulness is what you want from me. Say it again, faithfulness.
Hallelujah. It's Father God. Take it all, Father. We are all yours, Lord. We are all yours. Heart, soul, mind, body. Our whole life is for you, Lord.
is our desire not just today for all the days of our lives thank you Father thank you that you are always with us and you love us Lord God and your love for us cannot be measured that's why Lord we want to be with you to be more like you, to know you more, grow more in you. So here are our hearts. Here are our minds. Take it, Father. Here are our lives. For your glory, for your honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Arch. Wait, kids, don't leave yet. If you could make your way to the front, you guys can be seated. Thank you. You guys will make your way to the front. Kids, Matthias, that includes you. Come on. I'm serious, yeah. 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 And if there's any moms that want to come up, I, I, I just want to, here, just come up here. Yeah, come on. Come on. Don't be scared. You know, I, I, think, I think in the world today, come on, don't be scared. I don't bite. Only on Tuesdays. <laughs> Uh, I think in, in the world today, there's so much going on, right? And I think that these young people are the real heroes in our world today. They go home, they hear stuff. They go to school, they hear stuff. At home, they hear their parents. And it's not easy. But they're the real heroes, I don't think at home I don't give my kid my my sons enough credit. You know, I I just need to flat out be more prayerful because there are now. They're not our future. There 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 are now. You know, here here here's our now. Right? Like not our future. Rain, you come up here too. You're part of this man. Sorry, bro. Um uh, but you know, these these young people have such hearts after God and Jesus, it's, it's, it's really amazing. And if I could have a mom come up and pray for them, any moms? Joanne? And, and I'm asking for a mom because um, all the moms know and all the sons know that, like, we mess up and there's nothing like a mama's prayer, you know. And I know this is a praying woman. So if you could pray for these kids and, and, and do it like how you pray for your son, you know, from, from, from the depths of your soul, because they're the real heroes. And I just, can, can we give them a hand clap? You know? Heavenly Father, tonight we praise you and we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your, your holy presence in our midst. So we thank you tonight, Lord. We we count it a blessing to be able to come into your presence, oh God, to, to sit at your table, Lord God, to be fed tonight, Lord. Father, we bring before you, Lord, all our young people here 
tonight. We pray that you will bless them and anoint them, Father. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you will go before them and you will make a way for them, Lord. Father, you know the challenges that they face every day, Lord. The things that go on, Lord, even the music, the internet, things that they face at school, even, even the young ones, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you will bless them, O oh Lord. Father, that you will guard their heart and you will guard their mind, Father. We come against uh, the work of the enemy. We Lord, we cancel every assignment that he has against them, and we pray, Lord, that they are blessed and they are covered, O oh Lord God, from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet, O oh Lord God, and help them, O oh Lord God, to be filled, O oh Lord God, every day, Lord, let them make a difference, O oh Lord, the way that they speak, the way that they act, Lord, even the way that they smile, or oh, say good morning, O oh Lord God, that you would be in everything that they do, everything that they say, Lord. Father, we just give you thanks and praise and honor and glory for for them, O oh Lord God. Father, we always pray that you go before them and touch them, O oh Lord, and help them to, to be the light and the example to this world, O oh Lord, this dark world that we face right now, O oh Father, that you will let them be that light, O oh Father, as we give you praise, honor, and glory in your name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Yes. You guys can be seated. Give them a hand clap as they go. Um, I, I have an honor, and it's, a, it's really a privi privilege to work with kids here, um, but also at my job, that's what I do as well, um, and kids are just amazing. Um, you know, the, the childlike faith that, that God's talking about and, the, and that Jesus reminds us of, like, you know, don't stop my children from coming to me. You know, I remember when Peppy was little, and thank you, God, for reminding me. Um, but when I would get down or when I felt like the enemy was coming at me, I'd, I'd go grab his Lightning McQueen cars, and we'd go play. And it was great, you know. Um, but what I'm, it, it, it goes with what I'm going to talk today is that um, a great man once told me to keep it, it to keep it short and simple, God is good and the devil is bad. And if, and if you could remember, if you could take away anything tonight, God is good and the devil is bad. It's, it's, it's that simple. God wants us blessed. God wants our needs met. God wants to supply us. He wants to heal us. He wants to be there for us. He's never going to leave us or forsake us. You know, that's that's that's... That's what he wants to do for us. God is, is a good God. He's a merciful God. You know, it's not because of the things that we do. It has nothing to do with us. You know? It's all because of what Jesus has done for us. You know, I, I um some of the, you know, Matthias, you've probably heard me say this a million times, but Pepe plays baseball. I don't I really don't care if he goes three for three and hits three home runs and wins the baseball game. All I want him to do is try his hardest and have fun. And that relationship between a father and a son correlates with the relationship between a son and a father or a daughter and a father. You know, he, we, we got to have fun here on earth. We, we got to make the best of it. You know, I, I tell, I'm a hockey coach, and I, and, and I tell all my kids and, and parents, um, hockey is 80 to 90% mental and 10 to 20% ability, right? And that's how life is. How, how are you looking at it, right? Like, is your glass half full? Is it half empty? Is there no water in it? Is it overflowing? You know, but it, it's all about how you look at it, right? So we, God is good and the devil is bad. We have an adversary, right? We, we, we have somebody that wants to take away the blessings that God has from, for us, right? And I like to look up words. An adversary means a person or group or, fo or, or, force, or, or force that opposes, attacks, opponent, an enemy, or a foe. Um, and if you go to 1 Peter 5, 8, be sober, be, be vigilant, because your adversary, right, your foe, someone who attacks you, your opponent, the devil walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. 
and I like watching Discovery Channel when when like you see a a, a pack of lions trying to get at a a, a gazelle, right? Like they're just kind of waiting in the in the tall grass, and they try and find the weakest one. You know, they're not going to go after the strongest one. They're not going to go after the one that has it all together. They're not going to go after the one that can probably fight them back and beat them. Right? They're they're going to find the what the straggler in the back that's not so that's not so um, strong, so he can devour them. You know, um, John ten ten. Here's here's another terrible example. The thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He's not here to like. To, to take your wallet, even though that would stink, but he wants you to, to kill you. Not like, it's, it's not a regular kill. It's not like a, like a kill for now. No, he wants to kill you for eternity. He wants to take that eternity away from you. So it's not like he wants to kill you and you die. No, he wants to like kill you spiritually here. And so you can't live in glorious, beautiful, Golden streets, heaven, right? Diamonds as big as buildings. Um, but God is good, right? God is good. The devil's bad. The devil's bad. He's reminding us right here. But I have come that we may have, have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Um, you know, we, we, we can resist this enemy James 4, James 4, 7, um, therefore submit to God, resist, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And I remember one time I asked pastor, like, man, he just, he just keeps coming back. And he's like, well, slap him in his face and tell him, like, he has to leave. But, like, I kept saying, but, and he's like, Peppy, there's, there, there's no but. Like, r- remind him again. And then... If you got to remind him again five seconds later, remind him again. And sometimes we have to flush our thoughts down the toilet. Sometimes we have to, pastor taught us we have to change the ta- channel in our brain, you know, and, and like we have to recognize who the real enemy is. You know, like we've been slapping people for years, but we haven't gone against the real attack that's coming against us, against Satan, because that's who our real enemy is. Like we have... We have to recognize who our real enemy is. Our real enemy is not Joanne. I love you, Joanne. You know that, right? That's not our real enemy. It's the spirit behind some people. You know, so like, oh, this person's this and that and this. Like, we have to know who our enemy is, right? So we can resist them because the thief comes not not to kill us only here, but he wants to kill us forever. Um, so there is a biblical way to respond. You know, God did give us like spiritual ammunition, right? He, he, he really did. Um, so if we go to Ephesians 6.11, <clears throat> put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Like the wiles of the devil, the wiles is like a strategic attack, right? Like, I mean, my son's four years old and he already knows how to get over it on my wife like nobody's business and he's four. Like, holy mackerel. And my son does too. He's 13. He's a pro. <laughs> and the dads are laughing because you know what I'm talking about. You know, dads, you know, moms, moms with their, with their boys, um, but the enemy knows the word, and the enemy knows what will defeat him. So, like, I can't use my video game to go after the, the enemy. I can't use a, a, a cap gun. What's that going to do? That's not a spiritual weapon. That's just hot air, right? So, like, God gave us this, this, this spiritual ammunition, um, that, that we could use because the devil's coming and he's got strategic attack where he wants to kill, steal, and destroy from, he wants to just destroy us. 
doesn't say he doesn't want to take our candy or our ice cream. Um, he wants to steal, kill, and destroy. Um, and I have in my notes here, file your spiritual guns at the real enemy. You know? I, I, I don't know where I heard that, but my... Uh, even though he's a thief, we can resist him. James 4, 7 says, so it says we can resist him. Well, how do I? Because it says it. Like, resist him, change the channel. Like, you know, I, I remember, um, so I used to be, I used to be doing things that I shouldn't have done, right? Um, and I stopped doing it. I was the biggest, I used to smoke so much, so much, like every day, all day. And at first it was hard to fill my time. It's like, okay, what am I, what am I going to do? And my amazing, beautiful, wonderful wife, um, she says, well, read the word. It'll, it'll kind of fill in, it, no, no kind of, but it'll, it'll fill in what you need. The Holy Spirit will give you what you need. And He's a, he's a thief, so he's going to be in our brains to not do what we need to do. He's a liar, but if we submit to God, he's going to fill in all the blanks that we need. Uh, and this is one of my favorite scriptures, Proverbs 6.31. And when, when you remind the enemy of what, he has to do, kind of, you know, you kind of get ready. Yet, when he is found, he must restore sevenfold. I want, I want my stuff restored sevenfold, sometimes a hundredfold. Um, and then 2 Corinthians 10, I don't know if you have the message version. Do you have the message version? And, you know, I, I brought the kids up here. And, and I, I deal with kids all day long. And our kids need prayer. Not just tonight, but our kids, our kids need us. Right? Like it used to take a, I remember there was an old school saying, like it takes a community. Right? And it does. Don't let any, anybody tell you differently what a Christian should be. Right? We're, we're Bible, we're, we follow the Bible, that's what we do. We don't follow what man says, and I love you, pastor, but we don't follow what pastor says because he can make a mistake too, which he doesn't, but I'm just saying. <laughs> but we, we follow our Bible, and that was, that's one of my favorite things about this man is I remember when I first started coming, he says, get in your Bible. I, I'm not perfect. I, I what I'm sitting up, standing up here preaching right now may be wrong. So get into your Bible. I hope he, and he, your prayer was, I hope I'm right. And that, that stuck with me, right? The world is unprincipled. Our kids need us. If, if, if you see a young kid, I've never seen, I don't remember being seven and eight years old and not having confidence. I don't remember being, five, six, and seven years old and having anxiety. I don't remember being five, six, seven years old having depression. And, I, I'm, I'm, and I'm not telling you guys to, have a, to be pitiful. But these kids need us. They need prayer. Pray for our, all of our kids. Pray for all of our kids because she prayed like a mother would pray. You know, Gary prays like a dad would pray. There's no strings attached, right? So like you see a young person, pray for them. We, we, America, we, we need it in our world. Forget America. We need it all over our world. This, it's, it's, I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's running and we got to stop it. We just got to love on people. That's it. Like, just love. Just be love. When you don't know what to do, just love. Love conquers all, right? Love defeats all. When you don't know what to do and you don't know the perfect biblical thing to do, 
Just love. Love never fails. The world is unprincipled. It's dog eat dog out there. The world doesn't fight fair. But we don't live or fight our battles that way. Never have, never will. The tools of our trade aren't for marketing or manipulation. And he's saying this because he's explaining to the church of Corinth, like, you know, they were saying that he's using these fancy words to get people to believe in Jesus. So he's not saying it's not, it's not marketing and manipulation because honestly, that's what our world is nowadays. Like, you know, every time I hear something like, oh, you know, this, I'm a painter, so I pay attention to stuff like that. So he's, oh, this, this paint will do this and that. I'm like, well, just because they said it, I don't believe it, <laughs> you know, because um, that's all this world is, is like a bunch of hot air and fanciness, right? Like, but you can't put lipstick on a pig. <laughs> but they are for demolishing that entire massively corrupt culture. We use our powerful God tools for smashing warped philosophies tearing down barriers erected against the truth of God, fitting every loose thought and emotion and impulse into the structure of life shaped by Christ. Our tools are ready at hand for clearing the ground of every obstruction and building lives of obedience into maturity. And if you go to the New King James Version, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war in the flesh, and I, again, I'm looking up definitions, an intense armed conflict. That's what war means, an intense armed conflict. So if we have an intense armed conflict and we're going against a strategic attack, and if we just use our hot air, is that going to work? That's like using a cab gun or a gun that Joey has in his room. It's just not going to do anything. Right, like we, we got spiritual bazookas. We got like spiritual, I don't know what the rocket launchers are that we could hold on our shoulders. Like, you know, our, our kids are out here perishing and we just need to pray. We need to fall on our face and just pray for our children because we have such great people in this church. Just, I've never run into a group of individuals in my entire life that I feel like I could call at two o'clock in the morning and say, hey, Eric, I got a flat. Can you come pick me up? And he'd come pick me up. No, I, I don't have a doubt in my mind. And same, 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 same for our, same, a bunch of people. And that's not normal. Um, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty. Um, so like we're citizens of two worlds. Spiritual and the natural, um, redeemed by the Lord to live as people in the kingdom of God. And simultaneously, we are human beings living in a very physical world that will continually, that's still continually troubled or harassed by human nature. But our warfare is spiritual. And I remember when I first got saved, I said, Naomi, why is it so easy to do the wrong thing? Why is it so easy to walk down the bad road? Why is it so easy to open up your mouth and say the wrong thing? Why is it so easy to walk down that road? And I'll never forget the day that God showed me this scripture, at Galatians 5, 16 and 17. And this, this changed my life, this, this scripture right here. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, right? We live in two opposite worlds. They're opposite. One's fear, one's faith. The opposite of fear is faith. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you are not free to carry out your good intentions. And then it's my, my, I'm going to call it my famous Tom and Jerry, right? When Tom, you have the, you know, the Jerry has the angel here, and then he has the devil here. I mean, it's real, right? I mean, 
the, the two forces are, fi- are fighting against each other, right? So, like, who are you going to listen to? What are you going to do? We have to know. Again, it goes back to, like, we have to know who we're fighting. The enemy. That's who we're fighting. I'm not, I'm not fighting you, Joanne. And sorry, I love you to death. You know, I'm not, I'm not picking on you. But I kind of am. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but we have to know who we're fighting. Um, and, the instru- and the instruments are mighty because they're spiritual. That's why they're mighty. Not, not, not because I could say I'm loud or not because I could say I'm fancy, like that scripture said about marketing and deception. Like, no, it's because they're the words of God. And nothing is more powerful, nothing. There's nothing more powerful than the word of God. Um, the, the satanic strongholds just want to stop us from getting advancement in the kingdom of God. Right? Like today, I mean, Naomi and I spent like two to three hours working on a printer. And it just so happened to be the day that I was going to be ministering today. You know, and I was trying to have like, you know, like a smooth day, you know, I was, I was, I remember pastor told me one time, he's like, you know, sometimes when I got a lot going on, I'll, I'll go by like the lake or, or I'll go take a walk. And I was planning on doing that, but you know, the enemy wanted to knock me off course and he didn't, he didn't, you know, every time I come up here, I get, I don't know why I get so nervous. You know, and, and I, I feel better than I did last time, but I'm still a little nervous. And I know that's just the enemy trying to stop me from advancing. Because as I'm talking to you guys, I'm getting revelation, just like about Joey playing with the little cars. That's that's what I, the Peppy playing with the little cars. That's what I need to do more. So, like, if you're having a hard day, a rough day, go volunteer somewhere. You know, come to my house. Joey will play cars with you for sure. <laughs> he loves to ride a scooter. Um, but we have to know who we're fighting. And our, our weapons are, are mighty because they're spiritual. Um, and then if, if you could put up this, this um, our warfare demands spirit-filled It's not a verse. It's right below, sorry, Galatians 5, 16, and 17. It's a couple, it's bolded. The word demands is bolded. Okay. So, but our warfare demands spirit-filled, Bible-quoting, Holy Spirit-directed, supernatural prayer. I'll say it again if you could write it as I say it. Our warfare demands spirit-filled, Bible quoting, Holy Spirit directed, supernatural prayer, right? So like, that's what shuts the mouth of the enemy, right? I mean, when, 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 I mean, that's what we need to do. Spirit filled, not, not like, not, not from our brain, right, right from here, where, where, where God touches you. Find, find your place. Everybody knows where they're, where their prayer closet is. It doesn't mean it has to be literally in a closet, right? Like mine is in my basement in my studio. I'm like a big, sometimes I'm a mess down there. But man, I come out like clean. It's crazy. I get messy before I get clean. Hmm. Um, but our warfare is not against flesh and blood, right? It's against carnal, weak, worldly weapons, and, and those won't work. Our hot air won't work. If we try to fight with a cap gun, it's not going to work. Um, we need weapons that are God-empowered, right? And he, he gave us everything that we need. Um, I was watching um, today about Alex Smith, and he's a quarterback in the NFL. And he broke his leg, and as he was laying there, He's like, I knew what my season was going to be. I kind of, you know, like, we weren't going to the playoffs. So, like, yeah, whatever. 
they'll they'll um I'll have the rest of the year off. I'll get surgery and I'll be back by next by next fall and play, be playing football. But then he got like an infection in his leg. And this is like a professional athlete in his in the prime of his career. He was like 20 something years old. And they were talking about cutting off his leg. Excuse me. And after two years of not playing football, he came back. And he said, you know, it's awesome that I came back to the field, but that's not what I'm proud of. I'm proud of mentally what I was able to accomplish. Because life is 80 to 90% mental and 10 to 20% ability. Right? We have to know who we're fighting. Our, strong, our, our, our weapons are strong because they're spirit-filled, because they're Bible-quoting, because they're Holy Spirit-directed, because it's supernatural prayer. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> so some of the weapons um, that pull down these strongholds are God's Word. Hebrews 4.12. For the Word of God is alive and is powerful. It's sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Um, another, another weapon that pulled down these strongholds are is the blood of the cross. Revelation 12.11. And they over overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. Another strong, another way to put on the strongholds is the name of Jesus, Mark 16, 7, 17. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. So like the enemy knows how to provoke us. And until we figure out how to defeat them, just like your brother or your sister or your, or your co-worker at work <laughs> or, sorry, honey, or your wife. <laughs> I knew she was going to come back, so I had to say it, right? But it, I remember my brother, he wouldn't stop. He would, he would frustrate me so bad, and he kept doing it because you know how, he knew how to get to me. So the strategic attack that the enemy has against you, until you figure out how to defeat it, he's going to keep on. He's, it's, he's relentless. He knows what the outcome is going to be. He knows that he'll never get a chance to go to heaven. And he just wants to take everybody and be miserable with him. Right? And, and if... And if you want to know how to do that, blow the dust off your Bible, open it up, and read it. Spend some time with, with God. Like, you know, through, through the years we've, we've had in our youth group come, um, you know, people who are Buddhist, um, Muslims, and they would always come with all these questions. And I loved it because I'm like, you know, there were some answers I didn't know. Um, and it would make me study, so I loved it. It was fun. It was great. And I sat him down once, as you know, I, one day, and I said, you know, I could answer all your questions, right? But if you really want answers, open the Word of God. He'll give you fresh manna every day, right? He'll give you a, a, a cloud by the day and fire by night, right? He'll provide you fresh manna every fresh not some old stale stuff, fresh. Every day, he'll give us exactly what we need. Um, so Galatians 5.17, I, I want to end on this. And it's live by the Holy Spirit's power. So, uh, so I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature cr craves. Right? And if I think it's, it started with 16, but I don't think you have that, right? There you go. I mean, it's 
Let, your, let, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Like, that sounds so easy. But today, as I wanted to pick up that printer and beat on it, <laughs> after two hours of not being able to, but I knew, I knew who it was. I knew who my enemy is. Recognize your enemy. Know what you're fighting against. Or else you're going to be spinning your wheels. You're just spinning your wheels. Right? Like I, I had this wonderful woman that I used to do ministry with. And um, every time the devil would come after her, she'd go bless somebody. Oh, my. Oh, that means, oh, devil, I see you. I'm going to. And we used to go to the west side to help people. It's like, oh, I'm going to go buy someone so a bed. And we used to go buy him a bed. Oh, you still come? Okay. Then we're going to bring him some groceries too. And we used to do stuff like that. And, you know, there's, I'm telling you, when, when the enemy's message, you pray for our children and tell him that he can't have them and that he has to flee because we're resisting and we're standing in the gap because we have rocket launchers that are spirit-filled, Right? So let the Holy Spirit guide you. And I'm not saying that it's simple and that it's easy and that everybody can do it. And like, but like AAA says, take it one day at a time. Right? But man, that's a long day. And then, well, take it one situation at a time. That's a long situation. Right? And then I, my, my thing is because I went through my own struggle with addiction Take it a minute at a time, sometimes 30 seconds, you know? And, like, we all know, we all know Scripture, right? During those times, turn, turn to God because that's spiritual, that's, that's, that's spiritual warfare. That's spiritual weapons. Like, our voice and our, not by power, not by might, but by the Spirit, says the Lord. You know, it's not by our might. I'm going to grip my teeth and go harder and stronger. That doesn't work. Turn to God. Turn to the answer. Open your Bible. Read it. He'll direct you. It's amazing how sometimes when I'm going through stuff, my Bible will just be open, and I'll just go downstairs, and it's open to exactly what I need right there, fresh manna. Or I'll just open it, and it's, God is so cool, man. And I'm not saying that it's easy because I'm probably the worst in here, but, you know, it's a, it's a fight. Timothy says it's a fight, right? If it wasn't a fight, right, why is it a fight? Because he wants to kill us, to destroy us, so we don't live with eternity in the, with the king, where everything's glorious, you know? Thank you guys for your time. Pastor, you want to pray us out? or no? Naomi, can you come pray us out? Welcome, my beautiful, lovely, amazing, wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Is this on? Okay. Well, dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this night, Lord God. We thank you for your word. And Father, thank you for the reminder that it is only through your Holy Spirit that we get the victory. And Lord, when we're in a trial and a and we're being tempted, Father, you say that you'll always make a way out. And Father, I ask that you would just remind us with your Holy Spirit to turn to you and to look to you for our help because our help comes from you. And Lord, I bless each one that is here tonight. Father, I thank you for bringing us to this place. And I just thank you for Pepe and that you have done such a beautiful work in his life, Father God, and in our lives. And it's incredible, Father. We could never... Never, never, never count out your plan. I would have never thought that you would have brought him this far and done this many things and used him in the powerful ways that you have, Lord. And I'm just so thankful. We bless your name, Father. We praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I do want to say something. I do want to say something is this. When you minister, uh, the devil will come and try to attack you. That's just how it is. Anytime you try to minister, the devil will come try to attack you. So after you minister, he'll always come, or he doesn't always, but most of the time comes and tries to tell you you did a lousy job. You shouldn't have said this. You should have said that. You shouldn't have joked around about this. You shouldn't have joked around about the wife, you know, or something. <laughs> and, and, and all that goes, it's probably true because you were going to pay for it. <laughs> but, but, 
But I remember years ago, that was happening to me a lot, but years ago, Gary Kathan up here, uh, he's a mighty man of God and bold now and knows what, you know, feels good when he preaches the word of God. But the, uh, my brother was a senior pastor, I was an assistant, and Gary was working at the church, and my brother asked him to speak. And Gary came up and spoke, and he, I thought he did a great job. We had another minister, uh, Pastor Jeff Miller was there, and he thought he did a great job. But the devil, when Gary got done, he, he just got off the platform and ran, just took off. He didn't want anybody to see him. And so I said, why don't you come over to the house? I lived right next door, and we went to the basement, we talked. And he was talking about how lousy he felt. And it was a tremendous sermon. It was a tremendous teaching. But the devil beat him up. And the devil kept telling him. And so uh, Pastor Jeff, he had ministered more than I had by far. And he sat there and talked to Gary about, hey, that's how I feel a lot of times. And I can tell you that's how you feel a lot of times when you're being used of God. You second-guess yourself. The devil tries to tell you that. So when these men come up here and minister... Please encourage them. If, if they blessed you at all, please encourage them. Because I, I promise you, the devil will magnify things in their mind and say, you should have done it this way, you should have done it that way. So please take the time to encourage them if you've been blessed. If you weren't blessed tonight, maybe you need to go home and just get on your knees and ask God to forgive you. Because this was great. A great teaching. A wonderful teaching. You did a great job, buddy. Thank you. I'm proud of you very Thank much. You. And God you. bless you. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Why don't you stand up if you would, please? I guess we already prayed. But Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we thank you for Pepe. And I agree with his lovely wife. I agree. Uh, he's come a long way, baby. And we are so thankful that you have anointed this man to minister the Word of God and to minister to our kids. And Father, I don't have any teenagers that age, but I would feel totally, totally safe to have my children go and and be under this man's ministry. I thank you, Father God, for his heart. I thank you, Father God, for the ability you've placed in him. And Father God, the seed that's been sown in the hearts of those that are here tonight, I ask you that it would grow up and bring forth a harvest. I praise you. I thank you. And Father, I also thank you that there's those in this room that are anointed and, and you're uh, touching them. And one day we're going to say, wow, didn't they just minister a great word? Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And you're dismissed. Amen.